options uh, last week. Uh, and I know I went a little bit long, but I wanted to, that's the most important part, is this early part. Um, I'm going to hit the high points here um, uh, pretty quickly. But toxins in our food source, last week we talked about how to buy and remove toxins, today we're going to talk about how we put toxins in our system. Uh, this lecture is meant to be a survey discussion, if you will, because this, the whole concept of toxins can be very expansive. You know, we can talk about toxins in our environment, the air, the pollution in the water, etc. Uh, we're going to try to focus on the pollution in the food, uh, because this is the way we deliver toxins to our body in a more conscious, concentrated fashion. Uh, and the other one point that I'm going to emphasize is that not only do we put toxins in our food, but the fact that our foods are loaded with toxins and devoid of nutrients kind of creates a double whammy. Uh, so here, the little cartoon is a typical supermarket. You've got the high cholesterol aisle, you have the carcinogens aisle, the hormones aisle, uh, you've got the pesticides aisle, and so on. Uh, if I were to draw a similar cartoon, I'd put the little Mr. Yuck labels on here. The little signs say, not fit for human consumption, 95% of the stuff in the supermarket. And you guys can test. Because you guys can test. So, we're going to talk, to, talk about things such as dairy. I'm going to hit on dairy pretty hard. Uh, you know, this uh, uh, picture here it looks pretty healthy to some people, but this is not a healthy uh, meal, food substance. And we're going to talk about why not. But here's uh, talk about dairy substances. Uh, we will talk about how we uh, inject the animal with hormones, uh, and uh, in, indirectly we're going to talk about how we have to give them antibiotics. Um, as an example, we also put toxins on our plant-based foods. Uh, I'm going to talk about how, uh, although that's not the optimal thing, it's not nearly as bad uh, as it could be, uh, and uh, as bad as the animal toxins. Now, so starting off with the dairy. Now, when, when people often tell well, early on when I was, you know, lecturing patients on consuming food, they say, well, you know, stay away from dairy. They say, well, I only, I drink skim milk, or low-fat cheese, or low-fat yogurt, or zero-fat milk, or whatever the case is. So we, we think about the fat being the problem in the dairy. And it's not so much the fat, or I should say the fat is not the only problem in the dairy. So what I'm going to focus on is not the fat in the dairy, because we all know to go to low-fat dairy. But I'm going to say move even the low-fat dairy off the menu. Uh, and it's because of the protein, one particular protein is casein protein. Now, if those of you read the China study, Dr. Campbell talks about uh, studies that were done, a study that was initially published in the Indian uh, Science Journal, uh, where they had uh, <clears throat> exposed two groups of rats to uh, a liver carcinogen known as aflatoxin. So you had group A and group B. Group A had 1,000 rats and group A had 1,000 rats and group B. Both groups got the liver carcinogen. So both groups of rats were exposed to the environmental toxin, aflatoxin, that predisposed them to liver cancer. So they took group A and they fed group A a 5% animal protein diet. Group B, they fed them a 20% animal protein diet. They followed the rats over time and group A rats developed 0% cancer. So of the 1,000 rats in group A, nobody had cancer. And group B, all the rats had liver cancer, 100%. So then they reversed the diets. Group B, they changed the diet from 20% animal protein to 5. Group A changed from 5% uh, animal protein to 20. Followed them longer, in group A, the cancer rate went from 0 to 100%. Group B, cancer rate went from 100% to 0%. They then reversed it again, from 5% back to 20, 20% back down to 5, and lo and behold, as you would guess, it went from 20% back to 0, 0% 0 back to 20. So they were literally turning cancer on and off in these rats by changing the amount of animal protein in the diet. The animal protein they used was casein protein. Now, for all of you saying we Poison our cows, and all the bathroom, and natural food that's for the, the asthma. And the first time, and I never have had another. Right, that broccoli still brings some something in. Uh, yesterday, and I want to make it yes. And, and there, there a lot of community acquired uh, antibiotic resistant infections. A lot of 
it's like the and stuff off because just how contaminated. And I guess it just gets soaked up in the skin. I don't know. And so that's why they want you to properly cook your meat. And and anything that's on the counter with meat in it is is, is, is dirty. It's probably dirty. And they show the guy pulling a carrot out of the toilet. He says a, a, a fresh vegetables on the counter with meat is more contaminated than if it's in any other place in your house. They show the guy pulling a carrot out of the toilet. I'm not sure what he's implying, but the point is. Um, the, you know, the meat is very contaminated. And they, they know that the spot where they try to can't. So they rely on normal senses to make it hungry. It wouldn't. But a lion doesn't want a flayed steak, tenderized. No, they don't want that. That would we want that. We kind of trick, it, trick up, we, we, we trick our food. Yes. Do you eat any kind of fish? No. Not in the last five plus years. Don't miss it. Primarily, you know, romanticized about what our grandparents and great grandparents did, you know, they still had those, you know, uh, problems. And, and as uh, many of these are substances that get in our environment and get in our food, uh, farm raised fish are fed, you know, uh, uh, substances, uh, the omega fat, uh, the bad fats, as well as the omega 3s. Uh, coal tar dyes uh, is a natural percentage, it's found in our animal based food. They can eat a net higher amount of toxic food. Because if you take, say, let's say it's a couple of noodles here. Now uh, there's a few green peas in there, and I guess there's some chunks of carrot. But this carrot can be so overly processed that it doesn't resemble the natural property issue of the natural carrot. The peas similar. And then you get the processed noodles, and not to mention the MSG <coughs> and all the other chemical preserves. So you get and you can actually get this a uh, cup of noodles and make it toxic enough that it can be, you know, harmful. Uh, and you can, you know, you can get another, you know, other substances that are fried or prepared in certain ways. So plant-based foods can be made toxic. Um, the DES is that the same drug that it was banned back in the seventies? Um, yeah, and and a lot of these find their way in our foods through uh, the environmental substances. Things like that. Also, third world countries, quote unquote, who uh, can continue to use uh, certain pesticides that have these chemicals in it, they then transport their food to us. And so we get a lot of these substances that are banned here. Uh, but all this banned here, we're transporting food from another place where it's not banned. I was part of a study at Baylor that responded to DDS when she was first pregnant that, you know, helps them dangerous miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up being in a better state for that because it causes male and female um, organs to have issues. And uh, they found so they finally took it off the market after so many offspring were having different forms of cancer from it. And, I mean, it was banned in the, in the 70s. Yeah, and that's an important point you raise. I mean, there are certain chemicals that we can identify. Because in medicine, <coughs> in medicine, we can identify certain things and say, okay, okay, this chemical causes this problem and it creates this diagnosis, and so we can isolate that. However, um, health conditions are not always so crystal clear and well defined. So you think about the health problems that kids are having, think about the amount of uh, ADHD kids are having, the amount of other problems that kids are having. Just think about you know certain birth defects kids may be getting. Well, how you know how many of these birth defects occur? Well, there are a lot of chemicals in the food that we're putting in our system. Now, if you if you have a mother who's taking DES and then the birth defects, okay, it's the DES. But what if you uh, and also maybe have a mother who's drinking alcohol and maybe the baby has alcohol syndrome, so okay, maybe it's that. Or what if the mother's smoking crack cocaine, so we have problems with crack cocaine? But then what if the mother goes into a, a fast food restaurant? Gets a burger, a cheeseburger, and fries, and a, and a, and a milkshake. So, so she does that on a routine basis. We think nothing of it. And then the baby comes out having a problem. We say, oh, there's a birth defect. There's nothing we can do about it. It's in the genes. Well, what about the food the mother's eating? It's part of the standard American diet. A lot of parents are having problems getting pregnant. We get pregnant, having problems with the baby. Pregnancy induced hypertension. Uh, the more and more of these health related problems with pregnant babies. And you notice how the pregnancy itself is a malnourished state. So, so, so the problem gets compounded. 
with the fetus and the mother. And it all comes to the biochemistry of the cooking process. Nitrosity, you make the meat pink. Yes. I was going to say, I was reading on the web that, that like, plastic bags, like, plastic bags, they can be Okay, we have 